Hi friends, welcome back to the Healing Word ASMR channel. My name is Dee, in case we haven't met yet. I'm going to be focusing on reading the Word of God while relaxing you all at the same time. So I will be reading scripture verses focusing on healing. Focusing Him. In quiet. 
quiet prayer to restore you. Worship the Lord your God, and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away the sickness among you. So do not fear. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed.
I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. I will put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal, and no one can deliver out of my hand. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place, and just brushing your hair and giving you You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore, comfort Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor mourning, nor crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. And we look forward to that day, don't we, my friend? My son, Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to one's whole body. Whole body. A cheerful heart is good medicine. But a crushed spirit dries up the bones. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, 
a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up. Time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time. protects 
all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in the Lord will be condemned. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. Freely you have received, 
really good. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. One day, Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith. He said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for eighteen years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to in the house of prominent Pharisees, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling in his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, 
he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of the Holy Servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God. Now, my friend, will you hold hands with me? I want to pray for you. I want to boldly pray. During this time in the world, whether we are aware of it or not, the times are near. Whether that be our very quick life or the return of Christ, we don't know. But the times are dark and it is hard sometimes. to pray for you right now, that the powerful Christ that we read of in the Bible is alive and working right now in this world as we speak together now before him. And I hold your hands here, and I pray, oh Lord God, Father, would you bless these hands? you bless this soul in front of me now? Lord, help my friend here to look to you during the storms. To look to you even when things are going well. Lord, we are often behind a veil of temporary things and fail to see the eternal perspective before my friend from all temptation. Heal them, Lord. Heal them from the inside out. In whatever struggle, in whatever season of life, Lord, we look to you to heal us. If it is in your will, Lord, would you do that now and heal our bodies and our minds. Restore us and bring us close to you. Are sufficient, Lord. Help us not to look left or right, to be in want. Lord, you have made us for far greater things. Help us to keep our minds on you, our perspectives on you. Bless my friend. In Jesus' name.
seems partly that the cycle is increasing in this fast paced world. And I love that we can have this place of relaxation and meditation before you. In hopes, Lord, that you speak to our hearts on a deeper level. That the chaos and ever revolving thought life would be temporarily slowed down. That we may come before you in great reverence and zeal. O King of Kings, who deserves all glory. Amen. Remembers that we are dust. Teach me to do your will. <laughs> 
is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. You also gave your good spirit to instruct them, and did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and gave them water for their thirst. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared. of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. From the plots of men, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. For who is God except the Lord? Who but our God is a solid rock? God is my strong fortress, and he makes my way Your mistake is that you don't know. 
has come over that the Lord would remove it that the Lord would be graceful to you and give you peace that it would wash over you like a I pray in the name of Jesus that all your worries would be lifted, 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 lifted. that all your worries would be lifted, that you would feel nothing. Let it go. 
and let it melt away. And again, This is simply to relax you, quiet you, quiet your mind before I read a scripture while I relax you. This is to begin relaxing your mind before I begin feeding your soul and feel the warmth, the warmth, the light, flickering flame, calm you, just gently grazing your For your next visualization, your next visualization to ease that fear is going to be with this bulb syringe.
even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You need not fear evil, my friend, for the Lord is with you, and his rod and his staff Lord, give us comfort. Give us your comfort. Give us your comfort. Good. And the Lord says, Bri, Bri, the Lord God. your right hand. Hold it. It is I who say to you, fear not, fear not, for I am the one, the one who helps you. Fear not. He is the one who will help you. Lord, visualization of all your fears being brushed away. Brushed away. And God is our refuge and strength. Is your refuge and your strength a very present help in trouble? Therefore, we will not fear. We will not fear. You and I will not fear.
It is said in Psalm 34 I sought, I sought the Lord and he answered Good. He answered me from all my fears From all my fears Good. Those who look to him are radiant Radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. Never. So, my friend, do not be afraid, do not hide, do not be ashamed. For we, God's children, are radiant. Because of him. We are radiant because of our God. And we do not fear. We do not need to fear. So do not fear. God says, I will provide a way. He is our God. Our God. And he comforts. It is said in the Bible, it is said that the Lord is my light, my light and my salvation, of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When we walk in the light, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your hearts not be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Neither let them be afraid. Now, my friend, imagine this light, this light shining into your mind's eye and simply melting each fear away. Each fear away, just melting, removing each fear gone. Good, good, good. Each fear being melted by the light. Good. The light purifying your mind. The light purifying your thoughts, removing, removing, removing all of your fear and worry, all your anxiety, good, and all of your stress, melting it away. Good. 
me 
is a retreat center designed to help you restore your relationship with God and with others. We specialize in relaxation treatments to help you be still and remember that God is God and we are not. And so this evening in your room here at the cabin will just be offering some exercises to help your mind focus, to keep away distractions in a very fast-paced world and environment. It is very rare that we can meet together and focus. There are many, many distractions. So I invite you to close your mind to the loud, chaotic world that is often calling your name and to be still before God here with me. It is so important to remember, to remember God, and not to run away from our problems, but run to God, run to God with them. Okay, so at your retreat, though you have arrived at night time, I will still provide some exercises to help declutter your mind and focus on the one, the one who deserves our attention and our affections. And we are going to visualize all our worries and problems being pulled slowly and gently out of our mind. And out, just pulling extra. 
extracting all the stress and letting it melt off and gone. You've been fretting far too much, my friend, on things that are out of your control. We are all guilty of that, all guilty of worry. And as I provide this visualization of stress and problems, leaving, leaving your mind and being removed, I will pray over you.
as I wash your face with this warm towel. I invite you to remember how the Lord washes us clean when we come before Him truthfully, genuinely, honestly, confess our sins before Him. Is quick to forget and quick to wash us clean. We cannot do it ourselves. Jesus is that washcloth for our souls. He is the one, the only. here to cleanse the heart and the soul by praying with me, praying to our God, our Creator, the one who gave you life, who gave you life abundantly, the air in your lungs. That is a gift from God. That is a gift not everyone has. Life is short. We must be grateful. Lord, help us to be grateful. Give us hearts that are rejoicing. Hearts that are not eyes that see the blessings, the many blessings, oh God, that you have given us here on earth, where we live. Lord, clean our minds. Give us pure thoughts. Help us to think like you think do as you would do. For we are the hands and feet of Jesus. The hands. The hands of Jesus. Lord, help us. Help us to be your hands. Help us to see the widow, the orphan, the broken. Help us to serve those around us in your name. Good. And I'll take your feet. your feet as Jesus washed the disciples' feet. We are no greater than our master. He washed the feet of his disciples. We are called to be his servants, my friends. The world will give you false hope false promises and false joy, but it is in servanthood to God where we find true, true peace, true joy, and salvation, a rest for our souls. pray that we would be the feet of Jesus as well, that we would walk paths that are challenging, but that we would fear no evil, that we would fear no evil. That we would humble ourselves and remember our God who made himself man.
shown us the way say traps, sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault, because he was faithful, and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, We shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of God. Then these presidents and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man for thirty days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, Establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber, open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone 
who makes petition to any god or man within thirty days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel. And he labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no injunction or ordinance that the king established can be changed. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. Then at the break of day, the king arose and went into haste to the den of lions. As he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O oh, king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions, and they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him, and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him, because he had trusted in God. And the king commanded, and those men who had maliciously accused Daniel were brought and cast into the den of lions. They, their children, and their wives, and before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to their end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lion. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Huh. 
Sometimes I like to give my thoughts when reading these scriptures, as I know some of you enjoy listening to the commentary. For me, this is a terrifying time to be living in because of how massively wicked the laws were and the consequences to breaking them. The fact is, we have so little understanding of this time. It's a normal Friday, and the king has decreed a law that stops people from worshipping God so he can be worshipped for a month. And it's a Friday, and he knows that if people don't listen, then the three presidents are okay to take some people and throw them in a lion's den. I thought our laws were confusing and terrifying. But we don't, we don't even understand the time. I can't even imagine or grasp what kind of world that is. And I'm thankful to live in this, this time, this day and age. But, um, it is interesting, is it not, that power is always envious whenever it's threatened. Now, Daniel is an incredible human, an incredible servant of God, who doesn't even care about these laws and the fact that he could be given to lions. He still prays and he still worships. It's sickening to think of this whole punishment as it does turn on the men who did it and their families. It just reminds me that justice will always be served, whether in this life or in the next. There are so many false gods, my friends, and not just the ones we bow to in the flesh, but the idols of the heart that demand our allegiance and attention. Idols of power, of money, of material wealth and gain. We must be careful who and where we bow our knee. We must be like Daniel, who three times a day comes before the Lord God and worships and prays. He is reverent before the Lord God. And even if the lion's mouth did not stay shut, and that was the end of Daniel, I think we know he would have done no different. I wish I had Daniel's courage, and I pray that we never fall or become susceptible to what this world tells us. We must do, or must say, or must be like as Christians. We will serve our God, and we will follow his rules, and we will be glad to, even if it means that we are going to reap the consequences of it. So my thoughts are, Praise God and praise him all the time. (laughs) Okay, let's continue with Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions of his head as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, Four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea, different from one another. The first 
was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then, as I looked, its wings were plucked off. And it was lifted up from the ground, lifted from the ground, and made to stand on two feet. Like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I looked, and behold, another like a leopard, with four wings of a bird on its back. On its back. And the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth, and devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had and horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked, plucked, plucked by its roots. And behold, in the horns were eyes, like the eyes. As I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. Pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times stood before him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking, and as I looked, the beast was killed its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season of time. I saw in night visions, and behold, with clouds of heaven there came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him, and to him was given dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, that all peoples, all peoples, all nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious, and the visions, the visions of my head alarmed me, alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me interpretation of these things. These four, 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 four great beasts 
are four kings who shall rise out of the earth rise out of the earth but the saints of the most high the most high shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever then I desire to know the truth about the fourth beast which was different from all the rest exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet Stamped what was left with its feet. And about the ten horns that came on its head, and the other horn that came up, and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, and that seemed greater than its companions. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints. And prevailed over them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the saints of the most high and the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom thus he said as for the fourth beast there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all the kingdoms and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down, 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 and break it into pieces. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones, and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and the law, and they shall be given into his hand. For a time, times, and half a time, but the court shall sit in his judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of his kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. The Most High shall be given to the Most High. Their kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom. Kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey them. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarmed me, and my color changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Now there's a lot of different controversies that are linked to this vision. A lot of people who you know, make it about one thing or another thing about a certain government and whatnot. I don't like to speculate because I don't know. All I know is that one day everyone will give an account to God. Every single person in power, every single Christian or non-Christian, we all have to give an account. I hope that this message isn't too scare you or cause division arguments or anything like that. My hope is that we understand, we acknowledge that there are many mysteries, but our God is in control of all of them, and that he is powerful enough to shut hungry lions' mouths, enough to allow evil and corruption to run on the earth, but not forever. One day we will be in the presence of God, 
it may be soon, sooner than you think, sooner than you know. But we must be ready, my friend. We must be ready. Because the Lord will judge us, the only one who can. <laughs> so we, we should be mindful of that. I hope that you are well. I hope that your spirit is touched by the word of God and that the Holy Spirit would move within your heart, in your mind, in your soul. Thank you for being here, my friend. I am blessed to have you.